Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Asian Psycho. In this video, I'm finally concluding the official top 10 series that I've got going on, on my channel for all the gun categories in combat arms with the top 10 machine guns. And uh, yeah, a lot of some of you guys, since uh, I know that for a fact that some of you guys are machine gun aficionados, uh, some of you guys have been very much so looking forward to this. And uh, after this, if you guys would like me to continue the top 10 uh, series, then please leave a comment in, uh, below in the comment section, obviously, uh, telling me what kind of theme my next top 10 should be, you know, whether it be, I already saw a couple people uh, put comments in some of my other videos telling me to, you know, make a top 10 uh, sexiest guns in commerce or top 10, um, you know, most overpowered weapons, something like that. So whatever you guys want, uh, be sure to leave a comment below telling me which one I should, or which theme I should have the next top 10 should be, and we'll see where it goes from there. So anyways, without further ado, let's get started on the top 10 machine guns. Coming in at number 10, we've got the Mini Mipara. Now, the Mini Mipara is a very recent machine gun variant compared to uh, all the other machine guns that I will be uh, referencing here in the top 10. Uh, if you guys don't know, Combat Arms doesn't really... Um you know, release variants of machine guns a whole, uh, you know, all the time. But when it when they do, they make sure to make the machine guns at least interesting and viable. Uh, you know, at least for fire team anyway, obviously. But um, I've so far there's not really like a machine gun family that I really hate or something like that. Especially because of Mini Me before the Mini Me Par was released, uh, for the longest time never really had a family or any variants at all. So the fact that Nexon eventually came out with the Mini Me Para, the Mini Camo, and all those other var Mini Me variants, it's quite interesting. But anyways, I get, uh, as, I, as usual, I get sidetracked. The Mini Para is an excellent machine gun. It may not do as much damage as other NX standard uh, machine guns do, but the fact that it does come with an ACOG scope is very useful, and uh, having scopes on your machine guns is very, very useful, because normally, obviously, you guys know that you normally you can't have attachments on or s optical sights on machine guns so if it comes with it then it's, it already has a very good advantage over other machine guns because obviously having a scope is better than having no scope so there you guys have it the mini para is uh com comes in at number 10 because you know i just really like it i like the fact that it has an acog scope and it's not every day you see a machine gun with an acog scope Coming at number 9, we've got the M60E4 machine gun. Now, the M60E4 is the GP rare variant of the M60, and the one problem that I have with the M60, even though the M60 is a good machine gun, don't get me wrong, it is great, but the one problem that I had with it is that for some reason I always felt that it didn't really feel as powerful as other machine guns were, um, you know, whenever I was using it. So the M60E4 uh, the M60 E4 has a 51 damage over the M60 48 which makes it obviously it bumps the damage over to a two shot kill instead of a strong three shot kill making it a lot more powerful than the M60. So that's one of the main reasons why it's here at number nine. But the reason why it's not higher than uh, number than the number nine spot is because of the fact that it's just rare. It's overall, generally, it's just inaccessible. Uh, it has a high rank requirement, and it still costs a lot of GP even after the whole reboot changed. You know how Nexon decreased the rank requirements of the GP rares and decreased the overall price. I say overall in quotations um, of you know the GP rare uh, price tags for one day. So that's the main. Those are the main reasons why it's still here at number nine. But nevertheless, the MCC four is still a great machine gun, especially for fire team. In at number 8, we've got the RPKS mod, which is the GP rare variant of the RPK machine gun, which, honestly, the RPKs are one of my favorite machine gun families in the entire game. The RPKs are just accurate, they're reliable, and, you know, they get the job done. They're, I would say they are in a higher tier overall as a family of machine guns than are, you know, other machine gun families out there. But, as with the RPKS mod, the RPKS mod, if you guys didn't know, comes with its own Dragon of Scope. It has the same scope because it's a Russian of a gun, or it's a Russian line of guns. The RPKS mod comes with the Dragon of Scope that you see on the Dragon of SVD, the Dragon of SVDs, and the VSS. And uh, this sniper scope makes it actually very useful because, you know, because the RPK has a very high accuracy, I don't know exactly what the accuracy stat is off the top of my head, but I do know for a fact that it does indeed have a very high accuracy. No matter what the accuracy stat may say, it might be really low. But I, I personally think it does have a you know high high tendency to hit uh, targets accurately even at mid range. So the fact that it comes with a sniper's rifle scope makes it very useful for mid range. And if you can even spray people down at mid range, and you'll reliably kill people as long as you know they don't headshot you or anything like that. So the 
the RPKS mod, one of my all-time favorite machine guns, simply because of the fact that it does come with that great, great Dragon of Scope. So, in case you guys haven't had a, ch a chance to check out the RPKS mod, do check it out. Even for, even if you're not a fan of machine guns, using this is, is going to be a blast. Now, in at number 7, we've got the MG-21E Steel. Now, some of you guys may remember the MG-21E, which is a GP standard machine gun that used to be available for First Lieutenant 1. I don't know what exactly what requirement it, it gets unlocked at now after the reboot patch. But, the MG-21E, the main problem with the MG-21E was, was, again, with like, just like the M60, was its damage. I just didn't feel like it had it dealt enough damage to be uh, as effective as it could be. And the MG-21E steel, even though it does share a uh, a high recoil problem with the MG-21, the original MG-21E, I mean, all machines do have a high rate, a high, uh, high recoil, let's, let's be honest here. But um, the MG-21E steel does come with a lot more damage. I don't know exactly how much, but I do know it's very, uh, a lot more powerful. So, that's why it's here at number 7, because it's stronger, you know, it's accurate uh, within your first, you know, couple of bullets in your burst, and it's, overall, it's just, it's all about the damage, it's all about the damage, and it punches people down really quickly if you land all the shots. In at number 6, we've got the RPK-74, the uh, NX standard variant of the RPK and the RPKS mod from earlier. The RPK-74, although it doesn't have the, uh, the useful sniper rifle scope of the RPKS mod, does come with more damage. So I think the RPK did around like 44, 45 damage or something like that. The RPK-74 deals a 49 damage, which is which is kind of a damage statistic that you'd see consistently throughout a lot of uh, NX standard uh, machine gun, or yeah, machine guns. Uh, it's kind of like how 30 six is a popular damage stat for a lot of NX standard submachine guns such as, you know, the um what was it, the CC Scorpion, the uh the not the Magpul because the Magpul has a thirty a thirty five damage. The I think the what was it called? The my SAF and a lot of uh, the P I T R C also has thirty six damage, but that's an X rare, so fuck it. Um, it's kind of forty nine is kind of like that golden damage rating uh, of that a lot of NX standard machine guns share. The RPK seventy four has it. The M twenty one knee has it. The MG thirty six has it. Even I think the uh, I think the Ultimax one hundred has it as well. I'm pr maybe the MG forty two steel. I don't know if it's forty nine or forty eight, but whatever. The 49, 49 is a very popular um, damage statistic, and it's a very good damage statistic. It it. It makes machine guns very, very powerful at all ranges. It's not quite two-shot kill, but it's a strong three-shot kill, and so it makes it's it's it basically makes it very high, it's highly unlikely that you know anyone's going to tank your shots more than three times. So the fact that the RPK-74 combines the accuracy of the RPK machine guns and the high damage of you know 49 damage uh, machine gun makes the RPK-74 a very, very potent machine gun, even outside of fire team in the elimination games. Coming at number five, we got the M21E, which is the original uh, NX standard variant of the MG21E. Funnily enough, the M21E, if you guys didn't know, came before the MG21E, which I don't know why they did that, but oh well, whatever. But the M21E is just a fantastic, a fantastic machine gun altogether. It um, it kind of reminds me of the RPK74, where it's very, very accurate. It because it ha I think it has a slower rate of fire than other machine guns, and that's why its recoil, I, I feel like its recoil is very stable compared to other machine guns. The recoil stability is what really makes the uh, the m 20 oe deserve its spot at the number 5 post, because, you know, it has 49 damage, and it's got a very stable recoil. And plus, if you feel like you can't handle the recoil, the fully automatic recoil hip fire, then you can always switch over to 3-round burst, which I forgot to mention, the m 20 M20, M20, yeah, sorry. The MG21E Steel and the MG21E, basically the entire MG21E family, all have. They all have the useful three-round burst. If you feel like, you know, full automatic, fully automatic is just cutting it or isn't just cutting it, then you can just switch to three-round burst, and hopefully you'll do work with that. So the M21E comes in at number five. Now at number four comes along the MG36. Yes, the machine gun variant of the G36 uh, family of assault rifles, the infamous G36. And uh, just like the G36, the MG36 is a great, it, I would say it's the paradigm of machine guns in combat arms. But it's not the best. It's not the best, but it it is an extremely good machine gun. It comes with its it, it comes with the same sniper rifle scope as you would find on the G36E variants and the G36KE, and uh, yeah, it it's a sniper rifle scope just like on the RPKS mod. So it's very useful for mid range, very very useful, and uh, you know 
just having a scope is very useful in, in the first place. And it's just like the M21E, I feel like it has a very stable recoil pattern and it just stable and, uh, and predictable and it's very strong having a I believe it's, uh, it also has a 49 damage rating before this is before the uh, the reboot where it kind of switch flip flop the damage of uh, the uh, statistics around but the reason why it's all down here at number four is because these other machine guns are just a little bit better if not a lot better than what it does or what it specialized to do so here are the other three machine guns Coming at number three, we've got the Ultimax 100. The Ultimax 100, for some reason, is just a monster. I've gotten a lot of unbelievables, countless unbelievables, with Ultimax 100s that I've decided to unlock for seven days and go to Junk Fleet One Man Armies and completely shit on everyone in there. So the MG, the Ultimax 100, I'm not really too sure what exactly it is about it that's so good. It's just really, really consistent. It has a 49 damage rating, just like the, uh, just like the MG36, M21E, and the uh, the RPKS, uh, the you know the RPK74. But for some reason, it has like double the accuracy of the RPK 74. I don't know why. It's just it just wrecks people. The Ultimax 100 is it's a very strange machine gun. It's it's kind of like a dark horse machine gun that no one really knows about. But once you start using it, get get good with it, it people start asking you, what kind of gun is that? You know, I've never seen that before. And um, the Ultimax 100. This gun can wreck entire teams, and if you bring this thing to one jump from one one man army, and you're even slightly proficient with this thing, whew, just imagine all the boat and believers you can get. Now, in at number two, we've got the MG42 Steel. This is the statistic gun. It's kind of like the. Um, the CZ Scorpion Evo of my top 10 submachine guns where the stats make the gun. The MG42 Steel, let's think back to the original MG42. The MG42, which is the GP, the GP uh, standard variant of the MG42 Steel, had very good stats, but the problem with the MG42, or the two, there were two problems with the MG42. First of all, it had a fast rate of fire, but not a low, not a low enough. Uh, but it had too high of a recoil stat to accommodate for its uh, high rate of fire. So what you have is a machine gun that not only, not only, not only, yeah, sorry, I'm stumbling over my words again. That not only fires weaker than usual bullets. I think it only has like a 41 or a 42 damage rating, which is not enough for a machine gun in combat arms. Trust me, it's not. Um, so not only is are you shooting very weak bullets for a machine gun, but also you're shooting them too fast for your machine gun to be accurate enough. That was the pro that was the main dilemma with the MG42. With the MG42 Steel, not only do they re reduce the recoil by a significant margin, but also they jack up the damage from 41 all the way up to 48 or 49. It's ridiculous. This is the single most amount of statistic like statistical improvements that any one machine gun variant has over its predecessor like GP standard variant, and that's the MG42 Steel. The MG42 Steel not only has reasonable recoil, but also the rate of fire isn't nerfed at all. So you basically have a manageable rate of fire and a manageable recoil, but also you're melting people with a 49 damage rating. So the MG42 Steel is kind of like that gun where the stats make the gun, and honestly, it fucking does. And that's why it's here at number two. Now, the machine gun that takes the cake, and at number one, we've got the Mark 48 Mod Zero, or Mod O, whichever you, whichever you prefer. The Mod O was the original gun, the original machine gun that came with the scope. Um, I think it was either that or MG36, I'm not too sure, I, I forget, it's been such a long time. But the Mark 48 Mod O is just a tank. This thing is, the Mark 40, in case you guys didn't know, the Mark 48 machine gun family is the only machine gun family in the entire game to have all its variants deal more than 50 damage. They all deal 51 damage, meaning meaning they all do a, cons a very strong 3-shot, if not a 2-shot kill up close. So, when you put a, uh, an ACOG scope on the Mark 48 Mod Zero, which you normally can't do, like I said, with, with machine guns that don't have them, like if you have like a normal Mark 48, uh, you can't put a scope on it by default, or you know you can't just customize or modify it to have a scope. But the Mod O does come with a scope. So what you can do is you can scope in, and you can rip people apart who are coming straight at you. The, the main, I guess, pro, for lack of a better term, the main advantage with the Mark 48 Mod Zero scope is the fact that 
it's very, very controllable. It's 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 more controllable than you think, actually. All you need to do is just hold down the trigger, and at a certain point, the Mark 48 will reach like a like an upper limit of how high its recoil will go. So all you need to do is just drag your mouse down until it hits that maximum, um, you know, its maximum height of its recoil, and all you need to do is just hold it at that one spot. Hold it, and you know, so that it starts hitting people, and you just melt people. And one problem that a lot of scoped machine guns have, or machine guns that uh, that come with scopes have, is the fact that it's not machine guns aren't necessarily accurate enough to, you know, consistently place shots wherever their scope goes. It's a lot. Of, it's a complaint that a lot of people do uh, have when they start using uh, scope machine guns. It's like, oh, you know, once I start spraying with uh, while aiming down sights, it doesn't really go where I want it to go, and that's understandable because machine guns have a lot of recoil. It's kind of like how the M14s kind of lose the accuracy once you f start firing too fast. It's kind of the same concept there. So, but with the Mark 48 Mod O, it has a lot high, even though its accuracy statistic technically isn't that high, it actually has a pretty narrow uh, firing cone while you're scoped in. So, that's one of the main reasons why I love the Mark 48 Mod O is because the shots are predictable, you can kind of tell where they're going, and the recoil, once it hits its upper limit, it's very, very, it's very predictable, and it's very controllable, so, uh, yeah, the Mark 48 Mod O, this thing's a tank, and if, you're, if you haven't used it before, you're doing something wrong, but anyways, that's it for the top 10 machine guns, thank you guys very much for watching, uh, again, like I mentioned in the, in the beginning of this video, please, uh, leave a comment as to which top 10 theme I should do for my next top 10 video if I plan on doing more so again guys thank you very much for watching all the top 10 videos if you guys have done so if you guys haven't I'm going to be leaving links to all the other top 10s uh, for all the combat arms weapons uh, for combat arms and uh, in case you guys haven't checked it out please go check them out and uh, yeah thanks for watching we'll see you guys later goodbye